Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Dana and I had an interesting project come into the shop a couple of days ago, and we need to get it done. What we have is a cast iron stove door that has a crack along the bottom and a hinge that's been broken off. Now, normally we can do this type of repair brazing or stick welding with specialty electrodes, but today I'm going to use a high nickel rod and I'm going to be TIG welding it back together. Now, TIG welding presents its own challenges, but it also produces a really good clean weld on cast iron. It just takes some time and a little bit of patience. So let's get started and I'll show you step by step what we're going to do. I've taken a couple of still shots here just so you can have an idea of what I'm working with. The hinge is completely broken away from the bottom of the door and there is a hairline crack uh, pretty much that's going across the bottom of it. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do is wire brush this uh, on the back side to get it cleaned and get any of the fire braid that's still in the track out. So that's going to be my next step. Alright YouTube, as you can tell, what I've done is completely cut the crack out of the door. Um, I used the hinge to line up the bottom and this clamp to make sure that the door is still square. The next step is to preheat the cast iron before I start my TIG weld. Now, not many people know that you can weld cast iron with TIG, but if you use a high nickel content rod, that's precisely what you can do. It's important to keep the weld hot in between the two passes. I have to weld the hinge on next. Now basically what we're doing is maintaining or trying to maintain the temperature of this cast iron so it doesn't crack any further. Cast iron is very temperamental and if you don't treat it right, you can make a bad situation even worse. Okay, Dane is preheating the hinge. And what we have going on here I've got the door weighted down with a piece of rail track and I have a brass rod that's the same diameter as the uh, inside of the hole for the hinge and I ran it straight through to the other hinge to make sure that they're both perfectly parallel. I'm going to have Dana preheat this for another couple seconds and I'm going to hit it with the TIG. Alright guys, I got the tack done. Now basically to make sure that this is all still straight, what you do is just move the rod back and forth and you should have a very good freedom of motion. And that's pretty darn good. 
I'm going to have Dana take the torch away in a few seconds. I'm going to check my measurements, make sure that the hinge is exactly where it's uh, supposed to be, and then I'm going to finish the weld. Uh, we couldn't get the tack on film because uh, I needed Dana to keep the heat on the, uh, on the hinge. So until we get a third person in the shop, we're kind of uh, missing a little bit of footage here and there. But we appreciate your patience. YouTube. Basically, I have it sitting on top of my stove. Got a little fire going on inside. And I'm just going to let it cool down with the fire. And that should make sure everything's nice and stable. And uh, once that's out, I'll finish doing all the grinding of uh, all the extra material on the hinge. And that's all there is to it. All right, YouTube, the fire's pretty much out, and the door is pretty close to room temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my final grinding on it and get it back into shape. Well, there you have it. That's the finished repair. The only thing it needs is a coat of paint and it's ready to go back on the stove. All right, YouTube, there you have it. Now, what you really need to do when you weld any kind of cast iron with whatever process you choose, whether it's brazing, stick welding, or TIG, you have to keep it hot. Uh, in between the TIG passes, I had Dana with the propane torch keeping the metal at a consistent temperature. Uh, with cast iron, if it cools too quickly, it can become brittle, and you can drop it, and it'll shatter just like glass. Now, I'm wrapping it up today. Dana went home sick. She's not feeling very well, and I think she might have caught that Martian death flu that's going around. Um, I had it for about a week, and it was a completely miserable experience. So um, I'm glad to be back out in the shop. Now, once we were done with the welding... Dana kept the torch on it for several minutes, and the entire time I was slowly lowering the flame, making it cooler and cooler and cooler, until it was just a little bit of a blue flame coming out of the end of the torch. Uh, once the temperature of the wood-burning stove in our garage was where I wanted it, I just dropped the door on top and let the stove burn completely out, and it cooled down very gradually. It took about three and a half hours, but it's the best way to do it, it's to make sure that that cast iron sets up just right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, like I said, I'm going to wrap it up here, and I'd like to thank all the new subscribers who have joined us lately. We've had about 20 in the past month. Um, I'm glad people are finding the channel entertaining and educational, and uh, by all means, please keep on stopping by, uh, check us out, leave some comments. We truly do appreciate it. But for now, and until our next video, this is Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. We'll see you again soon.